So that means when x equal L over 2, I have L over 2 over here, 2 over 4, that is pi over 2, so I have this. Okay? So I can conclude that, oh, this is, this motion can be written as multiply sine 2 pi o Okay, this is Okay, let's denote this is a forced mode Okay, this is the forced mode, right? In vibration, this is the second mode So I denote this is F1 And I denote this is A1 And I can write this is 2 pi x to multiply a forced mode L. Okay, I'm going to correct the the handout I handed in. There is a mistake. <laughs> so what does this mean? Oh, the this is a vibration. But obviously, this vibration has two components. One is what is related with the time oscillation. The other one is related with the spatial variation. OK? So that is what I learned. Let me review what we studied. First, I introduced vibration. And we observed that the characteristics of vibration, one of the characteristics of vibration is period, or frequency, and amplitude. And we found that any kind of vibration can be expressed like this, using free concept of frequency and amplitude. And then we introduced the vibration of a string that mimics the vibration that is changing with respect to space. And we found that this kind of vibration can be expressed like this. One is time oscillation, the other one is spatial oscillation. Okay, that is a still vibration because, because the phase in space is fixed. It's a still vibration. It's not wave. I'm going to talk about wave later on. Actually, wave, the phase, I mean, the wave does not have a fixed phase difference in space. But the vibration, in this case, the phase is fixed. Everybody go up and down. And this part of vibration go up and this part down. Fixed space. Okay, let me begin with the first mode. Uh, oh, sorry, actually this is a second mode, right? And this is a first mode. So I will start with the second mode of vibration. As you can see in the text, okay? So let's begin with the second mode. And I can write the vibration of second mode as amplitude. And one is oscillating with respect to time, 
that I write the sine 2 pi ft. And because that is a second mode, I use a subscript 2 rather than using 1 as I used in the text. So I want to change it. Okay? And F2 is the frequency of second mode. Okay? And then over here, I'm trying to describe the spatial variation of a second mode. And 2 pi, there should be x. That has to be scaled by L over 2. Is it right? Or 2L? Let us check. When x equal L, that is a pi, therefore that is a zero. When x equal L over 2, uh oh. So this is not true. Maybe 2L. Is it correct? Yes? I'm not sure. When x equal L, that is a pi. Huh? L, just the L, okay. And L, and X equal L over 2, that is a pi, that is 0. And X equal L over 4, L over 4, pi over 2. Oh, that's correct. And X equal L over 3, L over 4, then... Yeah, okay, so that corresponds to our second mode, okay? So we are happy now. And also, I'd like to denote this is A2 because we are handling second mode. Okay, interestingly, this one has a two distinctly different scale. One is a time scale, the other one is a space scale. Okay? And recall that sine alpha sine beta can be written by some sine or cosine function that has a alpha minus beta, alpha plus beta, right? You guys remember it. I don't remember. How to disc how to how to use it. Okay, cosine alpha minus beta is cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta, right? And cosine alpha plus sine beta is the same and minus sine alpha sine beta. Okay, if I sub subtract this from here, from, I subtract this from this, then I will get what? Zero and I have two sine alpha, sine beta. Therefore, sine alpha, sine beta can be expressed as one over two cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. Okay. You see, let's review what we have been thinking. First, we review the vibration. And then we studied this simple vibration case that has a spatial difference. Why? The philosophy behind of this is the following. Everything can be understood based on simplest case. 